Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Octopus Builds, where we are building out the Trident project for the fictional company Octopet Shop. My name is Bob Walker, and I am the Technical Director of Customer Success here at Octopus Deploy. And today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than what we have been the last couple of the weeks, where we've been kind of focused in on the database deployments and adding steps to the process in and of itself. So what I want to do is I want to take a little bit of stock in terms of where we're at right now. So we have a runbook that creates the Trident database. Uh, we will generate the database delta report. We'll approve those database, excuse me, we'll approve the delta report and then we'll go ahead and deploy those changes. Now I have this step open to generate the database delta report. And you know, it does a pretty good job of what we want it to do, but it seems like it, it just seems like it's doing too much. It feels like it's doing too much. And it's something that I would rather have in a completely separate step. But the interesting thing is, is the, again, going back to the fictional company, um, the admins of Octopus Deploy, as well as other folks uh, within the DevOps team, we were talking a little bit about this particular conundrum because we want to make sure that each step does one thing and one thing well. But we we're also looking at this step and we're starting to think that approval process, that could really be something that's very generic and any deployment process could take advantage of. And so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be leveraging Octopus Deploy's step template functionality to create that repeatable reusable step. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead and let's clear up this particular. Oops, I want to keep the artifact. That would be bad if we dropped it. Um, but let's delete everything else up to this point. Because all we want to have for this is we just want to have the uh, generating the report logic inside of here. And this could be different per application. Um, some applications, they might use DBUp. Other applications, they might use Flyaway or some other database deployment tool that's out there. Uh, now you could standard you could create a standardized uh, process to generate the reports if everyone had standardized on DBUp, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we haven't done that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on done. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna removing the reporting functionality, excuse me, the checking functionality from the report generation step. Alrighty. So up until this point, we've been using either run a script steps or we've been using community step templates such as the send a Slack message on failure. In this particular episode, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be creating our own custom step template. And we do this by coming into library and step templates and let's go ahead and add. And this is going to be a run a script step. And for this, we're going to say auto approve database delta whoops if I could spell so that's going to be the name of the step in and of itself now I thankfully I have all of the changes all ready to go and so what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to copy and paste that step in so this is going to be inline source code I'm using PowerShell because I'm going to run this on Windows or you can also run it on Linux if it if you have PowerShell installed on our Linux worker completely, is completely up to you. Um, and so this is the script. It looks very familiar to what we've had before, um, but I did add in a few other bits and pieces inside of here because unlike the run a report step, we already knew we already know the report path in that previous step. In this particular case, what we need to do is we need to pass that in to this step as well as the various commands uh, indicating approval or indicating uh, some sort of changes. So we need to pass in some of those items. So we have the script already written. Now let's go ahead and let's add in some parameters. And we don't need to make it super complex. I already have the parameter names all ready to go. And these are the variable names. And I'm going to say commands requiring approval. Say comma I don't need to 
capitalize separated. Requires approval. If I could spell, good lord. All right, this is going to be a, I think a single line text box is fine and we're not gonna have a default value. Let's add in another variable. So I have made a few modifications to the script since the last episode. One of the things I did was I have two different variables. One that indicates that there is some sort of change that requires approval. And then I have another change, uh, another list of commands that indicate that there's just some sort of change that happened within that script. Uh, commands indicating change. And I might in the future, it might make sense to combine these. Um, it's just really up to you on how you want to do this. For this, for the example of this, um, having two separate ones. So, comma, separated. Okay. And you might also want to go in and hard code these into your script. Uh, it is completely up to you on how you want to handle something like this. I prefer variables and parameter, or you can call them parameters, just because it makes things a little bit easier. It makes it a little bit more generic. I can move these between spaces. Different teams might have different uh, set of standards, any number of different things. Or if you want to make sure everyone follows the same set of standards, hard code in the commands that you want to look for. That's completely up to you on how you want to handle it. And then finally, it is going to be, again, let's just copy in the name that I already have set up in the script. And let's just going to say the report path. The full path to the report, the database delta, delta report. And this is another single line text box. So this is just the path to the database delta report to review. Alrighty, let's take a look. You know, I kind of want that report path to be at the top. So that's just my preference. It's no one else's preference but your own. I have my steps, I have my scripts, I have my parameters. Let's go ahead and save this bad boy. Alrighty. Now if I wanted to, I could also come in here and I could add in uh, a new icon it's completely up to you as to what you want to do. I, for the purposes of this, let's just skip over that. <laughs> now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add my step. So let's go ahead and add a step in here. And we are going to add in the auto approved database delta script, something we just added in there. I'm going to run this on a worker, um, the hosted Windows worker, the same worker that is going to be running my the da the generate database delta report. That way we know the path is consistent. But this is an interesting conundrum because we have the path, but that path is hard coded here. So why don't we do a couple of things? So let's just say added in the auto approve Delta script step. So before doing anything else, let's get this moved into a variable because there's really no reason why this shouldn't be a variable at this point in time. So I'm just going to say project.database. Uh, let's just say report path, report.path. And we know it's this, and we can replace that with this octopus.environment. Int.name. Hopefully I spelled everything correctly. All right. Save this. All right, one other thing before we jump back over there, before I forget, is I have updated the SQL verification step time, uh, excuse me, library variable set to include a new variable called SQL verification change.list, which is just an extension of the command list with additional commands on top of this. It may seem a little weird. Um, but this was just more of a demonstration more than anything else um, to indicate that these are additional commands that are outside of the other verification commands. But I have two variables. That's the most important thing to take away from this. So let's jump back into my process. And I want to change this over to use a variable. Delete U, Control I, and we want to get the report path. Awesome. Okay, that's all I need to change here. 
And now I can come in here and I can add this. And this is the approval command. So I'm just going to say the command list. And then I have the change list. OK. Now before going, getting too far ahead of ourselves, we want to go ahead and move this up to be, so this is going to be after we generate the del database delta report, but before we approve it. One other thing we want to do is now we need to change around one last variable before I forget. And so we have reordered approve step. Awesome. Okay, so we have this. Now I, I, need to, I need to make one more change before creating the release. And what that is, is I need to come into my variables. And you'll recall that I had a whole rigmarole in the last episode where I used the wrong step name. Now, I am, now I've changed the step name because now this is getting generated. Excuse me, that output variable is getting generated by a different step. So I just need to come in here, make that change. I have my script over off the screen, so I'm just making sure that it's still called approval required. It is happy days. Great. So I should have everything I need to do to make this change. And let's get a database deployments step template. And let's just make sure this all works before we move on to the next bits. Fingers crossed I wired everything up and it all works exactly how I did it. Now hopefully I haven't waited too long since I started recording to when I actually started doing this. Um, otherwise we might be here for a few minutes while this finishes waiting. So let's just make sure. But if it is, it is. It's not the end of the world. Um, okay, cool. It is already there so it should go pretty quick. Now, the nice thing about this is this is a good way to verify, um, to make sure that there's no uh, accidental detection that a change has occurred. Perfect. Uh, because we're rerunning this shortly after the last time I recorded this. In case anyone's curious, I record these in batches. Uh, just depends on whenever I get a few moments free uh, to do this type of recording. And so I will record these in batches. And so you, you'll see like dates just all of a sudden jump three weeks ahead. Uh, that's just because um, I had recorded in a few weeks and then I came back to this because I, I get another free couple minutes. Um, but everything is still set up from the previous recording and so this database report should get generated pretty quickly. And now we're starting to auto approve the database delta script. Perfect. Um, so one of the things Ha ha, access to, to the path is denied. Isn't that interesting? Oh, what it is, is that's the, that, aha, uh -huh. uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I messed up. Okay, task summary. This shouldn't be running because there was an error. Oh, yep, I'm going to go ahead and fail this. That should be running because there was an error. Um, my guided failures took over for that one. This was a variable that I messed up. So we can fix that fairly quickly. Um, let's come in here, auto approve database delta script. And I made a small blue. So let's fix this. Upgrade.html. Um, provided path to report. It's an interesting quirk of how I have this package set up. I should, in future iterations, I'll probably go through and make this a little bit more clear. Um, this is just a quirk within the step in the, the database package that I, I created. Um, for whatever reason, I decided in, in that step uh, or that package, I was going to go ahead and hard code the name of the report to upgrade.html. Um, there's no reason for that other than reasons. Um, it's just Oops, it's actually called upgrade report HTML. Even better. Oh, I would have been made a fool twice. Uh, 
changing the name of the report. All the more reason why I need to go back into that package and I need to make that change. But for, the, for right now, no one wants to sit here and wait and wa watch me do that. So let's go ahead and let's get this back up and running. All right, we have to make a new release because database deployments report path. Um, because I made a mistake in our coding in the report name. So, you know, I have years upon years upon years of Octopus Deploy experience, and I still make these silly mistakes. Mostly it's all internal because I'm jumping between like six things at once. Uh, <laughs> between recording these and doing all this other stuff, that's just me being dumb. Uh, someone who's focused in on what they're doing is not going to make these silly mistakes <laughs> like I keep doing. Oh well. Uh, in an earlier episode, um, I said we're going to remove and add nodes to a firewall, and I meant to load balancers. So this is just one more thing we can throw on the throw on the pile of mistakes that you've witnessed me make during this recording. All right, so this should uh, process through hopefully fairly quickly. <laughs> oh. But if it is not possible to access the report in a future step. Uh, this is an interesting thing that can come up. Uh, so you might have a step that generates an artifact that might be running, that artifact might be running or generated on a completely separate server that's going to be the thing that's actually going to be approving it. Now that's an interesting conundrum that you kind of run into. When that happens, um, what I'll typically do is say leverage the artifact process and then uh, download the artifact in say step three. I could download that artifact from Octopus Deploy open it up, review it, do whatever we need to do with it. Uh, but I don't have to do that because I'm running everything on the same worker. Um, not that, not the end of the world or anything like that. So perfect. It said, hey, all scripts look good. No changes were detected. Great. That's exactly what we expected because if we were to open up this script, which I fixed that error where the environment name wasn't showing up, it was like earlier episodes is dot upgrade report dot HTML. I fixed that so now it's actually environment name uh, and there were no changes here this is just schema management uh, not schema management this a uh, role permission stuff that we really don't have to worry about so it did exactly what we wanted it to do it skipped over the steps that we wanted it to we skipped over the auto approval step which is perfect um, we also now have the ability to have a variable that says if a change has occurred in the database and that's going to come in handy in future uh, episodes but for now Let's just take quick stock of what we did today. Well, what we did today is we added a new step template and we created our own custom step template into our deployment process. And with a few couple a few clicks, a couple little bit of copy paste, and I was good to go with that brand new step template. And now this is something that anyone who is using this space or if anyone wants to import it into their own instance anyone could take advantage of something like this that's using this octopus deploy instance so we've made something that's reusable across all the projects which is exactly what we want we don't want to constantly repeat ourselves or anything along those lines so well thank you very much for watching today and have a great rest of your day